Good morning. My name is Patrick Oslo, and today I would like to talk with you about our field measurements of very oblique wave runup and overtopping with laser scanners. The area of interest, the Ames Dollar estuary in the north of the Netherlands, is a highly complex estuary with deep channels and tidal flats, which is part of the Wadden Sea. A particular aspect for this area is that the dike design conditions often are characterized by very obliquely incident waves, up to 80 degrees relative to the dike normal. As the reliability of the models as used for a Dutch dike safety assessment is unknown for such conditions, an extensive field measurement project is performed in the estuary for a period of 12 years. These measurements started in 2018, measuring wind, water levels, waves, currents, wave runup, and wave overtopping. In the project, the wave overtopping is measured with four innovative wave overtopping tanks built into two dikes, of which two are shown here. This is a robust method to measure wave overtopping, but fixed in one place. The wave runup and overtopping are also measured with an innovative system using two terrestrial laser scanners or LIDARs, which is shown here. This system consists of a retractable pole inside a waterproof cabinet. Two synchronized scanners are used to be able to measure directional information of the waves. The laser scanners scan along a line running from the dike toe to the crest at two meters distance from each other. The scanners measure both the distance R and the reflection intensity RSSI. And with the system, the run-up heights, depths, and front velocities can be measured. And from these measurements, the virtual wave overtopping can be calculated as well at any virtual crest level. The system further consists of a video camera with a frame rate of 50 frames per second used to analyze the run-up and an accelerometer to detect vibrations of the system. The focus lies on the measurements performed during Storm Kira. Storm Kira was an extratropical cyclone which hit large parts of Northern Europe starting on 7 February 2020. Kira was a highly unique and complex storm with offshore directed wind at the measurement location. The wind direction is shown in the figure as well as the measurement location. Due to this, the waves were almost alongshore directed with very oblique incidents. Kira was the first actual storm that was measured with the laser scanner system and immediately tested the system to the extreme. This posed large challenges for measuring, for example, the 3D front velocities and the overtopping volumes. This is a short video recorded during Storm Kira. Here, you can see the measurement pole that provides the parameters at the toe of the dike. Here, you can see the laser scanner system. Here, you can see one of the overtopping tanks. These images were recorded by the video camera mounted above the laser scanners. Measurements were performed from 10 to 12 February 2020. And during two of the five measured high tides, overtopping was measured. Therefore, these two high tides were selected for further analysis and from these two high tides, two storm peak periods were derived. The conditions during these two peaks can be characterized as relatively shallow water with quite a large spectral wave period, very oblique wave attack, a small number of overtopped waves, and a small overtopping discharge. 
Then on to the results. This figure compares the run-up heights as measured by the laser scanners based on both measured distances R and laser reflectance R SSI with the run-up as determined from the video recordings. The run-up was reliably measured based on the measured distances with most values within 10 centimeters. The run-up heights based on laser reflectance did not agree well, caused by strong reflections of the grid which was painted on the slope to aid with the video analysis. Previous research did show good results based on laser reflectance, so by removing several of these grid lines, it is expected that good results will be achieved during future storms. Then on to the wave runoff distribution. We know that our Rayleigh distribution is essentially a Weibull distribution with a shape parameter B of 2. We also know that deep water waves and deep water wave runoff are Rayleigh distributed, so it B is equal to 2. Shallow water waves and wave runoff have a Weibull distribution with B larger than 2. Furthermore, there are indications that oblique wave runoff in deep water is also Weibull distributed with B larger than 2. During Kira, the water depth was relatively shallow and the runoff was very oblique. It was found that the wave runoff during Kira was Weibull distributed with B equal to 2.1 to 2.4, so quite close to a Rayleigh distribution but with somewhat smaller, largest run-up heights. For the run-up depths, no validation material was available. Therefore, the results were compared to a relation of Van der Meer 2011, which includes a factor CH2% depending on the dike slope. Van der Meer recommends 0.23 for the present dike slope of 1 to 4.5, mainly based on small-scale tests. For a large-scale test with a 1 to 6 slope, 0.34 was found. And for the results as measured with the laser scanners, better agreement with 0.34 was found. The hypothesis is that the larger run-up depths as found here and in the large-scale test compared to the small-scale test resulted from the larger amounts of spray, foam, and entrained air at prototype scale. The results further seem to suggest that the influence of the wave angle of incidence on the run-up depth is small. However, further research is recommended. Previously, we achieved good results for measuring front velocities of normally incident waves with the laser scanners. But due to the very oblique incidence during Storm Kira, as visible on the left, it was very difficult to define a front and to determine the 3D front velocities. Measuring the propagation of such a very oblique front with just the two laser scanner transects is almost impossible. And for the very obliquely incident waves as present during Storm Kira, it was not possible to, to determine the actual 3D front velocities from the laser data. It was possible to determine estimates of the 3D front velocities based on the video recordings. Furthermore, the front velocity signals of both individual laser scanners were averaged and the maxima were determined. These video and laser scanner results agree reasonably well with each other, but some outliers were visible. The velocities as found here were larger than the relation of Eurotop 2018, as shown on the right. The most likely causes for the differences are inaccuracies in determining the front velocities, differences between small-scale tests and actual storms in the field, as well as differences between normally and obliquely incident waves. The calculated wave overtopping discharges were smaller than expected than according to the Eurotop 2018 equations. A factor 4 difference between the lasers and Eurotop was found, a factor 9 between the tank and Eurotop. The overtopping tank gave a smaller discharge than the lasers with a factor 2 difference where we expect the tank to measure well. An important thing to note here is that the Eurotop equations depend strongly on the angle of incidence and especially the spectral wave period TM minus 1,0. A slight change in this wave period can move the data from the lower 90% bound to the upper one. Therefore, not only accurate measurements of the run-up and overtopping are important, but of these parameters as well. Shape factor B values of the wave distribution of overtopping wave volumes of both the laser scanners and overtopping tank agreed well with the fit of Zanuti et al. 2013, as shown in the figure. However, the overtopping tank gave much smaller maximum volumes than the laser scanners, 
a difference of a factor three. A potential cause could be that the volumes as measured with the laser scanners include the foam and untrained air. Another cause could be that the laser scanners provide 2D values of the overtopping, whereas the overtopping tank gives 3D overtopping volumes. However, it is unclear if these possible causes can fully explain the difference in the maximum volumes and further research is recommended. The peak wave period of the run-up could be determined accurately from the run-up time signals as measured by both laser scanners. However, the angle of incidence could not be determined well, even though we previously achieved good results using the same method. Once again, the very oblique wave attack during Kira posed large challenges. Concluding, I presented the results of the first actual storm that was measured with the innovative laser scanner system that measures wave run-up and overtopping. This first storm, Kira, posed highly complex conditions with offshore wind and very oblique wave attack. The wave runup heights could be measured reliably with the system, and this oblique shallow water wave runup was widely distributed. The calculated wave overtopping discharges were smaller than expected according to Eurotop. The lasers gave a larger discharge than the tank, with a difference of a factor two. Quite large runup depths and overtopping volumes were found with the laser scanners, larger than with the tank. This was potentially caused by foam and untrained air. The three different velocities of these very obliquely incident waves could not be determined well with the laser scanners. And finally, the overtopping in Eurotop is very sensitive to the spectral wave period. The system will measure during severe winter storms for at least two more years. And hopefully we will be able to measure some storms with less oblique wave attack in the future to determine if the parameters that could not be accurately measured now can be determined well for such a storm. Thank you for your attention.